Next, we have Blueprint Update, Dr. Johnson. Good evening, President White, Dr. Townsell. I'm Susan Johnson, the Chief Operations Officer. And tonight, we, I am uh, providing an update on the progress of our efforts with the Blueprint for Maryland Schools. Uh, before I get into the presentation, though, I would really like to just give a lot of um, props and, and accolades to Dr. Sampson for his efforts the past two years um, in helping us move forward in working and complying with the Blueprint for Maryland Maryland's future. Uh, his work and the work of the committees has been tremendous in meeting our expectations as we go through and meet with the AIB and MSDE staff. So I really do appreciate all that he did in order to help move our system forward. So we felt like it was important for the board to hear where we are, um, what's been going on, and how we're moving forward with the implementation of the blueprint. Our staff has been uh, very busy this summer. Our implementation plan was submitted to the AIB and it's reviewed by both the AIB and MSDE staff. And both organizations offered, um, offered questions that we clarified and we made sure that when any time that they asked for um, feedback that we were meeting as a team and providing that feedback, making sure that we were answering the questions clearly. Two questions came up as a specific um, concern. Question 18 uh, came back again for a third time where we had to provide additional information. It had to do with data that, that MSDE provided about the alternate assessment. Um, these are the students with disabilities who do not take the MCAP assessments and they did not see in question 18 that our answer reflected that data. So the CCPS Special Education Department responded to that question and um, after a meeting with MSDE and AIB and we brief submitted that response. The other question that um, posed some questions from the AIB has to do with question 23 and that's budget alignment. So question 23 focuses on how new resources are being allocated and how existing resources are being reallocated to address blueprint priorities. Um, a multi-year blueprint budgeting plan with estimated funding allocations by blueprint pillar and or program and then the identification and description of strategies to increase the number of schools meeting the minimum school funding requirement where the money follows the student. So all the districts from across the state met with AIB and MSDE to discuss the success criteria of that question and to help us support, um, to support us in the resubmission of question 23. We're reviewing the the answers to question number three by the six counties who actually were approved and they're posted on the implementation at the AIB implementation site. So we're taking, we're reviewing those responses so that we can resubmit our answer in October. Additionally, this summer we provided specific reports uh, for verification of the 10% salary increase. We have submitted our career ladder we had to account for the MBC allotments and renewals. Uh, we had to present the career counseling report, part one. Uh, our comprehensive literacy plan was submitted. We, su we uh, turned in our data for the ninth grade tracker, and then we also did our MBC submission. So what's new? Right now we have five new pieces in place for the blueprint, including a strategic facilitator extension, strategic partner for technical assistance, shifting from pillars to priorities, aligning our blueprint responses to our strategic plan, preparing for expert review team visits, and then bringing on board new um, people who are pursuing their national board certification. So when we think about support, we have had the support of our technical assistance um, strategic facilitator, Brett Lane, 
and he has, his contract has been extended by AIB to continue to work with us. And his support is really helping us to move from, okay, you've written this plan, how do you move this from uh, what's written to implementation? Additionally, uh, we have another grant that is paid through AIB that um, offers technical assistance, and we have partnered with Afton Partners, and they're a strategic facilitator that is gonna be working with our finance office and, and supporting all the compliance options that I just read out in question 23, and they're going to help us make sure that we're reaching full compliance of the Blueprint 75% requirement, as well as modeling pay structures and what those impacts will be. So we're anxious to get started with that work in order to help support the Blueprint um, implementation. When we shift from pillars to priorities, each uh, of our answers in the uh, implementation plan was focused on a on a pillar, and the questions uh, focused on uh, specific ideas that are laid out in those pillars. So we took a look at all the pillars to find the commonalities between the pillars, and now as we start to think about how we're going to move forward in the strategic, uh, in the implementation of the blueprint, we're looking at those priorities. So we will continue the priority of pillar one, which is a mixed delivery system for pre-kindergarten. Uh, pillar two has shifted from just the career ladder, but thinking about how we're providing professional learning for teachers and leaders, um, what does our teacher preparation and induction look like, and how do we continue to expand the career ladder so that we can meet the requirements of the blueprint. Pillar three and four are being um, shifted and uh, kind of, uh, put together, uh, so to speak, because so many of the things within pillar three and pillar four complement each other. So we're focusing on that core instruction, which you heard earlier is about that tier one instruction and what should we be seeing in all classrooms. We also are focused on high quality instructional materials. That's an expectation you heard both math and ELA talk about those high quality instructional materials that are required. Uh, the next focus is that we're currently working on is that robust MTSS multi-tiered system of support that focuses on tier two and tier three. So as we've identified what a strong tier one uh, classroom looks like for academics, social emotional learning and behavior, we also now need to talk about, so what happens when that doesn't work? So how are we providing that support and what do tier two interventions look like and what do tier three interventions look like? We also want to continue to address the identification, the over-identification and discipline disproportionality, as well as the continuation of the development of our college and career pathways, whether it be the AP pathway, the dual enrollment pathway, our CTE pathway, and the support pathway. Additionally, um, we had spent some time with our strategic plan, and as we think about what's going on with the priority areas of our strategic plan. We also had our teams take the blueprint and make alignment to our strategic plan of where does the blueprint fit with this priority of the strategic plan. So that work is currently being done to make sure that both of these, these plans are implemented uh, well and that we're making those ties and alignment so that everybody sees the connection. Coming up this year, we do have an expert review team visit. Uh, the state determines expert review team visits based on seven criteria. So the first criteria is low performing schools. They look at the, they rank all the schools from lowest to highest and they choose the 20 lowest performing schools for reading and for math and those schools get an expert review team visit. Uh, the second one is to determine lower performing schools. So they rank all the schools from lowest to highest, and they look at the change in percent proficient, and they look, identify the top 20 schools in both reading and math, and those with the largest uh, decreases for each subject are selected for an expert review visit. The third criteria is highest performing, so they rank all of the schools, and they look at the ELA and math scores separately, and they take the top 10 schools uh, in the state with the highest increases in each subject and select them for an expert review visit. 
And then they look for criterion four to determine the higher performing schools. So they take the lowest, um, highest to lowest, and they are looking at the largest increases in math and ELA across the state. And that's how they select uh, those schools. Criterion five are low performing schools with students with disabilities. So these are the uh, schools that had the lowest um, percentages of students with disabilities scoring proficient, uh, looking over unweighted averages of two years of data. And then criterion six is looking at low performing multilingual learners and they're looking at the eight lowest um, performing schools in ELA and math and they're selected. Calvert County did not have any schools that met any of those criteria. So our selection is actually criteria seven. So criteria seven is for any school, uh, LEAs who did not have any schools identified, uh, they are selected by the lowest ELA or math proficiency in, in the ELA. Um, so that every school system is represented by an expert review group. So we are going to be, um, having an expert review team visit with PAC Elementary and they were selected because they had the lowest math proficiency in our county. So they're gonna be coming in this winter to do that expert review team at PAC Elementary. The principal and our team have already been connecting with the state on what that will look like and setting up dates for that. And then finally, uh, NBC. So Dr. Sampson created a process using our applicant tracking system to track who will be working toward their certification, who's working toward their MOCs. And this really allows CCPS to have all this data in one location. So most of the registration for NBC happened last spring, but we did have a information session on September 17th where 53 people uh, listened in and learned more about the NBC program. We have 46 current NBC candidates that will be continuing the process, and we have 79 potential new candidates. We have one candidate that is continuing, um, that is working toward their maintenance of certification. If we have all of these candidates actually achieve NBC this year, that would be 126. And that would be 126 times $10,000 that would be added to our budget if they earn that certification. So I, I wanted to do the math myself just to see what that number was because that's a tremendous number when you're talking about $1.26 million if all of these candidates earn. Not all the candidates are pursuing all four areas so in human resources, they'll look to see who those are. And as we go through the budget cycle, they'll be able to project how, how many could, could be in that. Additionally, uh, our human resources department did uh, receive the NBC support grant from the state, which totaled $23,752. And this grant actually will support stipend position for NBC facilitators, lead facilitators, and the lead Atlas facilitator in order to support all these candidates that are going through. So those positions are being posted right now. Atlas is the online professional learning program that they have at the state. And through this grant, we have access to at a minimum 100 licenses that the candidates can use and they can go in and actually see how to respond what they might be looking for on a, on a um, video when they're doing the video of their classroom. So it's a nice resource for the candidates going through the MBC process. If we need more, uh, we actually have access to more of those, those licenses. So with that, we do have a few upcoming requirements. Uh, our math department has been uh, working on the elementary comprehensive math draft plan and that is gonna be submitted on Monday. Uh, private uh, private pre-K provider MOU submissions are due also on Monday. The NBC fee incentive program, first submission is due October 4th. So this is the commitment of, our, our, um, of those candidates that are interested to say, yes, I'm gonna go through with it and I'm gonna take part in the uh, fee, fee incentive program. And then we have the career counseling report that's due the middle of October which focuses on the fiscal um, budget of the career counseling program. 
So moving forward, we have expanded our steering committee, our local steering committee um, group. We have ensured that we have representation from our implementation teams as we move from um, action planning and putting together how we're going to actually move this work out. We are working with our um, teams to make sure that we're monitoring budget. There's a lot of questions that are coming up about what these, the blueprint's gonna cost and how that will impact the local budget. So our steering committee implementation plan, uh, teams are actually looking at and asking questions about the budgetary impact of some of the things that are listed in there. We're gonna be working with Afton partners to focus on that budget to make sure we make sense of it. We have formed joint committees with CEA for the peer assistant review process, which is part of the blueprint mandate. And we've also joined with both CEA and CASA on the development of the level four of the, t of the career ladder. Those things are both due by the end of the year uh, to the AIB. And then finally, we'll continue to explore how we can implement any type of during the day tutoring programs and implementing school schedules that will help accommodate the 60-40 split requirement of our teachers. So we have a lot of work still ahead of us in, in this endeavor, um, but I think we're all trying to make sense of it and we're up for it. Any questions? Vice President Claggett. Thank you, President White. Um, you mentioned the expert review team visits. What type of data is provided back to the um, LEA regarding those visits? The expert um, review team process includes focus um, interviews, classroom observations, they meet with teachers, they meet with students, they meet with um, administration. Uh, I, I don't know if they meet with parents or not. And then they do classroom visits. So in looking at all that data, what they provide back to the school is a report of what information the focus teams are saying about their experience in the school, and then they're looking in those classroom observations to talk through and share information about the strategies that they saw and uh, strengths and weaknesses or areas of growth of our program. And I know that Huntington High School had an expert review visit. Has that report been provided back to us? Yes. Was that shared with the board? It has not been. Okay. Um, is there, will that be shared with the board at some point? Um, is, will there be a presentation on it? Is the plan to just share the report, allow us to read it, ask questions? Uh, has the information been reviewed, discussed, regurgitated? Okay, yes, I would like to ask President um, White if the board could be briefed on the results of that report at a future meeting before December 31st. Yes. We'll make that happen. Anyone else? Okay. No, no, I, I have a lot. I was just trying to let other people go first. Um, speaking of the expert review, yeah, um, I'm so glad they're they've chosen PAC mm -hmm. because I think we all know, you know, that school has unique challenges, um, and you know they're larger than you know the middle schools uh, down there and they have split buildings that have very different populations. And so I'm hoping that this expert review team, will, they will probably highlight that, the issues that are going on at that school. And I'm hoping that we listen very carefully to it. And when, when they have findings, sort of like in an audit, um, are we required to respond at any certain point in time? So they present the report back for us to review, and if we have any questions or comments, we can make those comments, and then they give us our final report after that. And then it is incumbent upon us to take that, that information and then make sense of it and do Im implement those suggestions that they need to, that they have provided for us. Okay. Oh, so, Ms. Belinsky, not to interject and cut you off, but Dr. Townsell just shared that actually the school system chose PAC. It yeah, wasn't the, the state. We don't meet the state criteria, so they didn't have the opportunity to select, so we select our local so, partners for it. So I'm, I'm happy to see that, just to see if they have any um, recommendations for uh, 
administrative organization, you know, that might help us. Um, and and I would, I'm glad that you, you asked for the Huntington review because, you know, we need to see what is being reported to the state on our own schools. Um, then I'm also glad that you talked about the, that the steering committee is looking at budgetary impact mm -hmm. because one of the things that I think I've talked with Dr. Townsville about is that when building this upcoming budget for next year, we want to be able to put flat out numbers as far as, you know, what, what every piece of the, of the uh, blueprint is costing us. Um, and we know, we, we were told for the last four or five years that yes, we're not, we are fully funding the blueprint theoretically, but they're reducing our other foundational pieces. And so they said, we are supposed to do things differently. You know, that's the pat answer. And so when, when the steering committee is, is developing this budgetary impact that we would love to see, um, I hope that we can say, well, we are having to pivot and do things differently because we're not getting the funding that we used to get. So we, this is just hard to, for us to understand, you know, how our system is absorbing this, um, the, the, full, the, the reduction in state aid and that it's not fully funding, you know, our pure blueprint increase. Yeah, I think when um, I was listening about question 23, one of the things that they talked about is how are you allocating new, but the, yes. the second thing was how are you reallocating the current? Yes. And I think that is the one thing that we continue to struggle with because we think about what our needs are and, and it, is, it is difficult to determine what you stop doing and, and say, okay, we're going to shift that over yes. here because this is what is, is most important now, even though we, there might be a belief system that these things are important as well. So I think, they, I think that is a tremendous struggle um, for us. Sure, it has to be. Um, and you're right, it's hard to, to quantify what you're not spending. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you can document it in any way, <laughs> well, I think we it have would help to. Us. I mean, I think that's what question 23 is, is asking us to do, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but you have to forecast what it will look like, and it's got to be multi-year, and that's only going to surface well, um, you as a board, us as a system, to understand that impact over time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And thank you very much for that. And then my last question is, we're supposed to be reporting on the comprehensive literacy plan. Is, with the new super and state superintendent um, and all the talk about literacy uh, and perhaps real changes within our school system, um, is that impacting the blueprint or has that not bubbled down through to blueprint? It is in the blueprint. So all the science of reading is outlined in um, that quality, high quality instructional material and um, professional learning. So when you have heard and when you read about all the things that Dr. Groover has done with the science of reading and letters training and having the letters coaches last year, it was all that um, fundamental building right. of, of our teacher's skill and understanding of how to teach reading and um, I actually also took um, letters for administrators so I could understand what the teachers were going through and making sure that um, as administrators were being supportive of that. So when you think about the state superintendent and her, her view okay. of the science of reading, we might use a, a different product, but it's high quality and it is one that is um, well respected in the science of reading world. And I think that we are starting to see, uh, hear teachers say that they understand how to teach reading so much um, better than they did before. And we're starting to see those results coupled with the high quality instructional materials, coupled with the professional learning, coupled with the diagnostic and the iReady assessment and the information that goes from the, um, to help teachers make decisions about classroom instruction and reading. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, we hear all the positive things uh, about that, um, but they, uh, 
just that one thing where she said, uh, the state superintendent said that they want to crack down on third grade. You know, that seemed. I think, are you referring to the third grade? Retention? The retention, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not been voted on by the State Board of Education. Uh, still conversation going on about whether that's the direction we'd like to go in or not. Okay, good. Because we're just, you know, I mean, everybody's going along and we're, we're implementing a lot of great stuff. Um, so anyway, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Ms. Grinnis. Um, I jotted something down. I just wanted to clarify. It said reach full compliance of the blueprint 75% requirement. Is that where we are or is that where we're headed? That's where we're headed in our budget. Um, we have to demonstrate how 75% of funds follows the student. So looking at our students with disabilities, looking with our multilingual students, how does that money follow the student? And that can our budget actually show that demonstration? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Johnson. You. Uh, one thing, as far as uh, the commissioners, because when we're talking about budget and everything, are we still communicating with a representative from the Calvary County commissioners to make sure that they're on board with what's taking place? Yes, you're talking about our monthly. Uh, so, yes, sir, we are. We, um, I was actually at the commission meeting this past Tuesday and discussed with the county commissioners how we have ongoing monthly meetings with the budget director at the state level, I mean, excuse me, at the county level, so that's still ongoing. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 